everyone, welcome to Adrian Homestead. I'm Josefina and today we are back with a recipe video for enchiladas de barbacoa. I actually had to pull out my recipe book for this one because I haven't made it in a while and so I couldn't remember off the top of my head what all the ingredients were. So thank you Jesus that I write down my recipes when they are successful. That is my biggest tip to you guys. When you make a meal and it is bomb.com and you don't want to forget it, immediately write it down because you will be thanking yourself later when you try to make it and you have all the ingredients right here. All of these ingredients are gonna be listed down below in the description box. So to start off, I'm gonna take these chiles, which are two guajillo chiles and one chile ancho. Chile ancho is just dehydrated poblano peppers. So they are extremely mild. They don't really have much heat to them. And then guajillo are a dried mirasol pepper, which have zero spice and is purely for the flavor and the coloring. So this will not be spicy at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bowl and I'm going to rip the tops off of these peppers and then split them open and pour out all of the seeds that are inside. The chile ancho are always a little bit more difficult, um, but with these I recommend you always pull on the stem really hard first to uncrinkle it <laughs> and then get some on you. And then it'll be a lot easier to rip open. Which I mean you have to remove the stem anyways, but with these they're usually really squished up in there. These seeds are always pulled out because when you're using a lot of the peppers um, a lot of times the seeds inside of them are bitter and so then your sauce ends up kind of having a bitter taste that you don't want. So this just kind of helps to mellow that bitterness out by removing that. And it is totally normal, especially when it comes to ancho chiles, for it to be sticky in here and to have to really pick at getting the seeds out. If you get a sticky one and you've never dealt with these chiles before, it's totally okay. There's nothing wrong with your pepper, it's just part of it. These ancho chiles are my favorite because they smell like like raisins. They have this like really yummy sweet smell to them. Oh, it's like a pepper mixed with a raisin. I know that sounds weird, but I swear it smells so good. It's my favorite one. Anytime I peel it, I have to sniff them. <laughs> so all these dried chiles are now gonna go into this water. They're gonna boil, that way they can reconstitute and get nice and soft again. And along with the peppers, I'm also gonna add half of an onion that I cut in half so it's in quarters. That's also gonna get in there so that can also get soft. And while I am waiting for those peppers and onion to soften up, I'm gonna add all of the other ingredients that I need for that sauce right into the blender. Six cloves of garlic, two teaspoons of some black peppercorns, two teaspoons of some cumin seeds, a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves, One tablespoon of some dry oregano. Also a quarter cup of some apple cider vinegar. Last thing is gonna be some salt to taste. I'm doing about a tablespoon. And the last thing I'm gonna do to prepare while I wait for those chiles is to get out some foil and put the meat on it. I'm gonna take one piece going this way. and then another piece coming this way. So you're gonna to wanna to make a T shape with the foil. And I have two pounds of some chuck roast. And I'm gonna lay that right in the center. All of the peppers are nice and squishy, so they're ready to go. That took about 10-ish minutes. So I'm putting those in, along with the onions. So what I'm trying to get out of this is like a puree kind of a paste that I can rub all over that meat so that it will stay in there while it's steaming. If this decides not to puree enough, then we can add just a little bit at a time of the water that the peppers and the onion boiled in. Okay, there's been a bit of a struggle, so we're gonna add in just two tablespoons for now of some of that liquid. Okay. 
And I'm also gonna take a spatula and scrape down all of the stuff that's stuck to the sides. This smells so good. Now I'm gonna pour all of this marinade on top of this. My eczema and psoriasis are really painful on my fingers right now and I don't want to cause any more pain. So I'm gonna use some gloves to rub it in on the underside. You want to make sure everything gets nice and covered. Now we're going to wrap it up. So what you're going to do is the side that's under. So this piece of foil is the one on top. I'm going to go with the opposite one. I'm going to come over here and wrap it over. And then the opposite side. And now these ends can come up. If I had plantain leaves or even banana leaves, they would have been a great substitute for foil and wrapping this, but since I don't, foil it is. So now let's take it over to the pot to steam. Inside of this pot, I've got this steamer basket right here set with some water underneath, and the water is just coming up right under it so that it's not flowing over it. And I'm gonna stick this with the open side up on top of that. The lid goes on. I'm gonna set it to medium. And this is gonna simmer in here and steam for the next four to five hours. I'll be checking on it periodically just to see if it's tender enough yet. But once that meat starts to just fall apart all on its own, then you know it's ready to go. Okay, it has now been four hours since I started the meat. I literally just turned it off. I'm gonna pull it out once I finish making the enchilada sauce so that you guys can see how delicious it is. And I definitely took a piece and it was glorious. So let's make the enchilada sauce. This is the enchilada sauce that I made in a previous video. So if you wanna check out just some basic cheese enchiladas, I'll put that down in the description box. But let's go ahead and get started with this sauce. Okay, so I have the pot that I used earlier to do the chiles. Um, heating up with two tablespoons of oil. So to that, I'm gonna add in three whole cloves of garlic. And this half of an onion that I chopped up into big chunks. Okay, I'm gonna let those cook and get nice and brown and soft while I work on the rest of these ingredients. So I have this chile negro and a chile guajillo. If you can't find chiles that are labeled chile negro, it's the exact same thing as chile pasilla. So look for pasilla. I'll have all of that down in the description box so that you can see exactly how that's spelled when you're looking for it. So just like I did with the chiles earlier, I'm gonna rip off their tops and take out the seeds from the inside. Okay. The onions are starting to get soft and their edges are getting brown. So now I'm gonna add in these serranos. This is what's gonna add spice to the sauce. If you do not want it to be spicy, then you can just cut back and do one, or you can exchange these for a jalapeno. These dry peppers, however, are not gonna add any spice to it. This is purely for color and flavor. This is gonna be a more like sweeter, lighter flavor. This is gonna be a lot richer of a pepper flavor. And while the peppers are getting nice and blistered, I'm working on the tomatoes. And the tomatoes, I'm just cutting into long quarters. So now these are gonna sit on a medium heat. You can do medium, medium high depending on your stove. I feel like my medium is more like a medium high. So I'm gonna let those blister. This is what you wanna start seeing on the skin of the peppers and the tomatoes. 
All right, tomato skins are nice and blistered and they're getting all wrinkly, so now I'm gonna add in the dry chilies. I'm gonna do a cup and a half of chicken stock, and this time I remembered to defrost my chicken stock before the recipe. So go me! And some salt. I'm only gonna add about half a tablespoon right now so that later on when it's done, I can check it and see if it needs more. I'm putting the lid on and I'm gonna let that cook for like 10 to 15 minutes until those tomatoes are so soft that all it takes is for this spoon to mash them. And then I'll puree everything. Here comes the moment of truth. The delicious meat. I'm gonna pull this out and put it onto my cutting board. I'm actually gonna get a bowl because I don't wanna lose all this yummy, juicy goodness. Oh my god. Okay, I had to bring you guys in a little bit closer and a little bit higher because this is literally just coming apart. Look at that. Oh my goodness. All right, it's officially been 10 minutes. So I'm cutting the heat. And now I'm gonna take off the lid and use my immersion blender to puree this. If you don't have an immersion blender, then just pour it all into a blender and let it go. It's all pureed now. I'm gonna add in some salt because I just tasted it and it does need a little bit more. Look at this glorious sauce. Oh my goodness. I've got everything done, the meat, the sauce, and now it's time to do the tortillas and assemble everything. So in a pan over here, I have about half a cup of oil heated up. You're gonna want a high heat oil. This is avocado oil. Um, just make sure that it's not something like olive oil because that's gonna burn. And of course, my favorite tortillas. Oil's nice and hot, so I'm gonna be looking at the time on my phone here as I put these in because these are not gonna be in here for long. So. All right, it's been five seconds. I'm giving it a flip. And another five seconds and it's out. Okay, let's do another one. Five seconds and flip. seconds and flip and when you see me doing this motion it's just because in the middle it'll bubble up sometimes and so doing this will just help it to get all the way evenly cooked in there in my last enchilada video I explained this part but for those who have not seen that video the reason why it's cooked in that oil that way is so that it kind of like creates a skin on top of it cooking it already it creates that skin so that it's able to be pliable and once it goes into the sauce and comes out, it's not going to fall apart and become mushy and gross. That helps the tortilla to keep itself intact because otherwise, if I do just this straight cold tortilla in it and I put it in the sauce, not only is it going to absorb it really quickly, it's going to fall apart the way this one is and then you're not going to be able to roll or do anything with it. There are different areas in Mexico, depending on where you go, where the tortilla is either going to be dipped in the sauce and then fried in the oil, or it's going to be um, done this way, but then it's gonna be folded in half and not rolled. So every region does things differently. 
this is just the way that I grew up doing it. And I prefer it this way because doing it in the sauce and then the oil is literally just like splatter central. It's like sauce fireworks and I don't want none of that. I've moved the sauce back up front. So now, actually, I'm gonna put on my gloves so that my skin doesn't die in this process. You gotta be a little dramatic sometimes. All right. So tortilla, I'm gonna put it in, flip it over, and bring it over. And the next one goes in, flip it over. And you can use tongs for this. one bring it over so now I have that I'm gonna take some of this meat oh my goodness we're gonna fill it in you can also add cheese into this I don't do dairy so I'm not going to then we roll it up and transfer it over And we've moved back over to the sauce. So I'm gonna spoon some of this over them all. Last thing I'm gonna do is sprinkle some sliced onions and some minced up cilantro all over top of them. All right, and it is ready to go. Time to take a bite. Sorry if you hear my dog playing in the background. I'll make sure I get some onion and some cilantro on it. You guys, these are the best enchiladas I've ever made. I'm so excited. Oh my God. Oh my God. I know I need to stop, but I don't want to stop. And I should be telling you guys how delicious this is and what it tastes like, but I literally can't stop. Okay, I'm gonna describe it to you so that I can just keep going. This is not spicy at all. I added in the two serranos, but this is like a really mild heat. It's super tolerable. This is something that if you like drink water, it washes it away. The meat is so like yummy, herby flavored. And then with like the mellowness of the sauce on top that has this like really yummy sweetness because of those tomatoes getting a chance to blister in there. Oh my goodness. It is so, so amazing. I really want you guys to try this recipe. I hope it doesn't look intimidating because it's not, it's really easy. It just takes a few steps and the longest thing is just cooking it, the meat inside of that pot. I mean, if you can use a pressure cooker and you know how, go for it. This is so worth every second of making this meal. And then the onions on the cilantro on top, you need that on top. It like perfectly balances it out. You get the freshness of that along with the sauce. And oh, it's so good. I hope you guys give this a try. That is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I hope that you're willing to hit that subscribe button and stick around with me for a while on my journey to becoming a homesteader. I'll see you in the next one.